Hey everybody, my name is Matt Russell, and I'm here to talk to you about the differences between chats and channels within Microsoft Teams. There's some really good reasons why you might want to choose one over the other. A really common question that we get when working with customers who are starting out with uh, Microsoft Teams as an application is what the difference between a chat and a channel is. This can be very confusing, especially if you come from a traditional direct message platform. When we talk about chat, chat is a replacement for those direct chat communications. It's an environment that's really about the people who want to communicate and the things they have communicated. You can do things like sh share files, um, as well as chat, but it's really geared around uh, that lifetime of that communication between those individuals. Channels, on the other hand, is really featured around the content that these that individuals are communicating about. And it's meant to have a lifetime that's much longer than a direct message or a direct group chat with five other people. Now that we've talked about what a chat is and what a channel is, I wanna get into a little bit of detail about um, what you can do with them and what you can't do with them. So first you might be wondering how you can delineate a chat from a channel within the application itself. So a chat is really right here under this chat category. You can see any chats that you've started with uh, either one or more people. You'll notice that you can come in and create a chat with any number of people. The limit is around 250 uh, individual people that you can chat you can add to a direct message chat. In addition, you can come up here and you can actually rename this chat um, and you give it a name, a group. So so we're gonna call this new project chat. And now we've I've actually named this and it's chatting with two individuals. So now we can know, hey, we know what we're chatting about perhaps. And if I wanted to update it or if someone else in the group wanted to update it to be, you know, maybe we're chatting about a different topic, we can also come in and update that chat with a different name. Uh, in addition, if I wanted to add an additional person to my chat, I can actually come in here and say, hey, I wanna add uh, someone to chat. And I can say, I wanna include my, don't include my chat history. I wanna include the last day of chat history or I wanna include all chat history. When I do this, this is actually gonna start a brand new chat. So I'm gonna come in here and uh, add another person. Um, and when I do that, you can see that I've now added another person to this chat. Um, and Mitch is only going to see the chats that are, because I didn't choose to keep the chat history, he's only gonna see the chats that come afterwards. So this new message that I'm gonna type that's only going to be available to Mitch. That's gonna be the only message available to Mitch. Uh, the same thing with a individual chat. If I'm in an individual chat, I can add another person and make a group chat. Um, you also have the ability to share um, and, and look at the files that you've had in the chat. Um, but again, remember that this, all of these features are exclusive to the people that you've added to the chat, right? And anyone within the chat they're, the, they're also able to manipulate this chat, add additional people or post things. Um, and it's really all about the users in question. So chat, the biggest, the, mo the biggest thing to remember is that chat is related to the individuals within that chat. So if someone were to leave the organization, as an example, all of anything that they might have shared within the chat is actually stored within their OneDrive. So when that OneDrive goes away, no one will have access to those files yet again. again. Um, in addition, the chat history is only available as part of each person's uh, mailbox, exchange mailbox. That's where this a lot of the stuff is actually stored. So again, when they leave, if you were to delete their mailbox, etc., all of that content goes with them. Because again, this is all related to the people and they are talking within each other or to each other. Before we continue, this video is focused around Microsoft Teams but it's likely that you use other Microsoft 365 products like Power Apps, Flow. If you're interested in content around those products as well, subscribe to our channel. So now let's talk about channels. Channels are really part of a team, which is something that must be created before you can start using them. So a team has an owner, it has a, a bunch of content related to it. 
all of that content is what makes it makes a channel really special because that channel is related, interrelated to all of that other content. So as an example, I have several teams here. Um, if I go to the stream team, um, there's a general channel. Now, if I go in here and I start um, typing a message, that message is available to anyone who is a member of that team. Uh, in addition, where, whereas on a chat, if you look here, I don't have a way to like, for example, if I wanted to have a chat with someone and have a threaded discussion about um, this particular topic, I don't have that option. I can just continue to add new messages. In contrast, under Teams in a channel, I can take any message that was generated and reply to that message and have uh, additional content uh, and a threaded discussion about that, uh, that topic. Um, now, let's say that I only had a few people added to this team and now someone else has joined this group and, and I really want them to be able to have access to that. All I need to do is go come in here to manage team, add a member. So as you can see right now, Michael Wright and myself were the only two that have access to this. I'm gonna go ahead and click add member. I'm gonna add Mitch. And now that he's been added, he'll show up down here in members. And immediately, if you were to come into the system and click on this channel, he's gonna see all of this history automatically because again, it's about the content within the channel, not about the people who are talking. So if I wanted to share a document, so for example, I have a font archive. If I drop that in here, it'll upload it. Now, instead of where in a chat, it would store that in your OneDrive, this is actually gonna store it in the SharePoint site behind the team. And again, everyone in the team will have access to that file automatically, can view it, can edit it. Um, it's just there for them to, to be able to work with. And you don't have to worry about if I leave the team or if I am working on a different project, then uh, if they would lose access to that file. So because you put it in the channel, it's available to everyone. In addition, teams have the ability to have up to 10,000 users. So that means when you're here chatting in a channel, you can be communicating with up to 10,000 users. Whereas on a chat, if you remember, you can only do up to 250 direct users in a direct message. Some of the other differences you might notice would be this, uh, if you go into chat and you look at this uh, audio call, video call, you'll notice that when you're in a team, you don't have that same functionality. So in a channel, instead what you have is meet. Um, so that's meet now or schedule a meeting. It may seem like they're very similar in nature, but there are some nuanced differences. So if I come in here and immediately try to dial this, so if I do an audio call, this is gonna immediately attempt to call all of the people within that chat. So if you look here, it's actually trying to call out to these people, right? Whereas if I go into the Teams channel and I click meet now as an example, This is gonna actually create the meeting, but no one is going to automatically be called. What does happen, however, is if I go back to the channel, the channel has a new message that says, hey, meet, meet now, we started meeting, and anyone who wants to join could click this button to join. Or uh, if I go back into this meet, the meeting itself, uh, and I go to participants, I can say, hey, I want to include these people. So I'm going to ask them to join because I really want to meet with them. So this allows a lot of flexibility um, when you're trying to meet with maybe two people out of the group. Um, but maybe, maybe if somebody else has the time they want to join, this allows you to have that flexibility to be able to do either. Another feature that may seem similar between chats and channels is the tab functionality. So up here, you can add additional tabs uh, to your channel and you can choose Stream or Excel, um, and you can do the same basic functionality within a chat. So again, if I come up here and I want to add a stream, um, I can put in or select a channel or put in a, a particular video if I had a direct URL to it. Um, but the thing to remember again is that when you do that, that's specifically for your chat group. Adding new people to it or having that whole set, that setup 
lasting beyond what you've configured or what that group of people have con configured um, is difficult to manage. Whereas in a team, you could set that up for a, the same thing for a specific channel. But again, let's say that I want to, uh, we don't just want general. Um, for this particular project, you can add additional channels. So for example, training videos. And this can be a channel that's dedicated exclusively to uploading video content or including video content using stream or using uh, another, uh, you know, the website tab, et cetera, to provide access to those videos. So again, it's just another way that you can take what would be in a group chat, uh, a very large amount of content and segmenting it out so that it's more useful and meaningful to people. Uh, to that same end, when you're chatting, if I wanted to perhaps create a chat that's about uh, a new project that we're working on, and maybe we've got two other things that we want to talk about, I have no way to create additional uh, group chats with a different name. So if you remember, I, I came in and renamed this, but if I go and say, hey, I want to create a new chat, and I want to chat with uh, Michael Wright, Mike Bodell, and Mitch, Immediately, you'll notice that it brings me right back to the chat that I was just in, right? I don't have a way to create a brand new one with a different topic. We created this graphic to help summarize the differences between chats and channels within Microsoft Teams. If you're interested in a high res version of this, please click on the link in the description below. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of the differences between chats and channels within Microsoft Teams and you can use this information to make a good decision about which one to use. Um, there's very good reasons to use either of these options. If you have any questions about this, feel free to comment down below. And thanks once again for watching this video. We'll see you next time.